explorers. Um, we're just taking a quick squirt up the beach. Um, we've, we've had a few comments lately and we thought it was about time to do a, a rig run down on the Navitel, on the Navara. Yep. Yep. Let's get yep. into it. It's full of sand at the moment, yep. but yep. Uh, it, it's high tide, so yeah, it's a bit of a sandy run up the beach, but um, yeah. Yeah, so we'll do a, we'll do a full rundown um, and also we'll slot in a, um, a product review on all the Motop accessory gear that, that Shane's got um, up on the roof there. So we've done a few trips in it now, so it's probably time we can uh, we can give some feedback and and, um, and tell you what it's all about. Yep, let's uh, do it. We've also got some wireless mics, so we're testing some wire um, wireless mic setup. So forgive the audio if it's a little bit how are you going, but um, but it's our first time using them as well. So we'll anyway, there. let's hook in, eh? <coughs> I'll, right. get, I'll go I'll go for a little bit of a little bit of a wander around just to show the rig itself. So I can actually just talk while you do that. And I don't yeah. even have to. Yeah, like we don't even have to be in front of the camera <laughs> anymore. Wicked. You can just sort of these go up to 200 meters apparently. So. Yeah. So well, if you want to, if you want to scan around it, and I'll just, I'll, I'll give a rundown of, yeah. of what it is. So, yep, it's a 2021 Nissan Navara STX. I was looking at the Pro 4X model, but I, I really just wanted something of a blank canvas, so that I could, um, sort of make it my own and do my own mods to it. So it's all leather interior and stuff. I, I went all out this time, and I got all the, all the goodies inside. Um, so yeah, it was fully standard when I bought it, brand new. The first thing I did was wheel it up to Procheck Automotive up at the Sunshine Coast. And they um, tricked me out with a full Outback Armour four inch long travel suspension upgrade. And the, uh, the Neato Trail Grapplers. The rims here I got shipped up from Melbourne with the tyres. Um, they're just your standard um, D-locker sort of uh, imitation rims, but they, they do the job for now. So, so what size did you go? Tire size, I went. Uh, it's a two nine five seventy seventeen. So, um, I had to play around a uh, quite a bit with tire size because I was going to go the thirty five inch, and I was just coming out a little bit too wide. Um, I didn't really want to play around too much poke or anything like that. I don't want to. I don't want to run into too much trouble with that stuff. So, I wanted it just to sit nice. In the, in the guards. Yeah, so I got these flares uh, from uh, the Ute Mart on the Gold Coast, and I wanted the tyres just to sit, you know, just nice, in like just outside of those, so. Um, so, so as you can see, it's, it's, quite, it's, quite a, it's quite a comfortable setup. So the four inch long travel suspension, it just can you explain the long travel suspension a little bit for, for those that don't really know? Yeah, so the way the, way the guys at Procheck explained it to me was, um, it's, you know, if you go like a three inch, they said it's like basically a two inch spring. It's just sort of stretched out. So you don't get too much extra travel in it. But with this, it's actually, it's actually a taller spring. So it's a full four inch lift. Um, and, and it's got the travel that whole, that whole length of the lift. So, yeah. Um, and, that, and that enabled you to, to, um, to get those boots under it quite comfortably. Yeah, really comfortable actually. That, no, that, no scrubbing. No scrubbing no. on inner guards at full lock or anything like that. No, it's just a tiny little bit of the of just that little plastic bit that that covers the the inside wheel well. I just had to trim a slight bit of the corner. Yep. On on the front there, but um, apart from that, no, they fit in there really well. And I'll just grab a shot as you can see along the side of the car. The wheels aren't sticking out of those flares at all, so no real trouble with the with the lower on that one, I, just, I would assume. Yeah, I just don't want to play around too much with that stuff. But you can go underneath and have a look at the at the suspension setup if you want. It's done really well. So that was the first lot of upgrades. Uh, the suspension, wheels, tyres, um, and then from there, I, I, I drove it around for a little while and then I ended up ripping off the, the sports bar off the back. Um, and uh, ripped into one of these uh, Renegade uh, tub canopies. So took that down to Redlands, got that installed. Um, sorry, I can't remember the name of the, the full drive mob that installed it, but it was basically a flat pack uh, canopy. Um, and they just, put, they just put it all together for me um, and siliconed it all up and installed it. Uh, and then I whacked the uh, Motop camper on top. So, so look, look, I'll just back up a second just while we're still on the body and style. So, so the only thing from factory that you changed was suspension and tyres. There's no like window tinning or and, and this, this you didn't get like a sort of blackout kit or anything for the yeah yeah so logos. I, I did actually, but yeah, it's uh, suspension, wheels, tyres, and then um, 
I actually got a different grill. I actually bought the Pro 4X grill and badge, so it's actually genuine from Nissan. I was going to put uh, just paint. I didn't want the chrome there, so I was going to paint it, but I ended up just saying, bugger it. I spent all this money on the truck. I may as well get the the genuine grill. So I got that from Nissan. It came with the two badges, so that blacks out your front badge and the and the back badge. Wasn't too keen on the red on there, but it does the job. And just some recovery points down here? A couple of recovery points, yeah, that, that I just installed myself. Quite easy to fit? Yeah. Oh, actually. <laughs> actually, no. It wasn't easy at all, and I wouldn't recommend it at all. <laughs> so, they, yeah, they come with these, these bolts, and they've got these massive bits of wire welded to them, and you've got to try and, like, feed it through the chassis, and it's an absolute nightmare. So I would not recommend installing those things. Just take it. If you're not, if you're not mechanically minded and no. you want, want a nice four-wheel drive, just take it to a shop and get it done. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I would never do it again. And, and while we're up the front here, what's the deal with going MIA? Where did that come from? Yeah, well, as I said, I, I you know, this is the my first brand new four drive, so I spent all this money on it, and I thought, bugger it, I'll get, I'll get some plates, and um, I was playing around with a few ideas, and gone MIA, I punched in, it was available, and it sort of just suits me to a T because um, you go friend, MIA. My friends know me as the guy that's always gone off tripping on the weekends and disappearing for you know long weekends and stuff like that. So, do so. So to put it in context, Shane's nickname all of our lives has been Smoke Bomb. Smoke Bomb, yeah. And, and you'll just randomly hear his car start on a Wednesday <laughs> afternoon and you won't see him for two or three days and he's yeah. been up the beach camping on his own. So it just suits me. All my friends think it's a bit of a laugh, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Go on MIA. It's, it's um, a cracker. It's just taking its own identity, yeah. Yeah. All right, so so from, from factory, the upgrades we've covered, so your tyres, suspension, um, we, we might just drop some info in there for, for um, uh, what was it, Pro, Pro Check Automotive? Pro Check Auto on the Sunshine Coast. Yeah, I'll put all the details in the video so you can see where I ordered the rims from, uh, all the details for Pro Check, um, the guys that fitted the Renegade canopy. Yeah, I'll put that all in the description. Yep. And then, the, so, tyres, suspension, the bl sort of blackout badge kit, um, recovery points, you gr change your grill, your rear bumper, and that's basically it from, from factory, right? Yeah, rear bumper's standard. Yep. So it's just, yeah. Oh, yeah. But that's that's all. Until I got the uh, the rooftop tent and everything, yeah, that's basically all that's under it. Uh, so far, the, uh, the next thing will be snorkel and a, and a bit of a tune and exhaust, but um, I'm not in too much of a rush, but yeah, that'll be the next thing. Apart and from that, it's all standard. Shall we have a quick look inside while we're, while we're on the Yeah, I don't know how tidy body. it is, but. I just, uh, I reckon just the front sort of. So they're, they're actually they're quite nice, aren't they, the Navaris? Yeah. So as I said, I was, I was shopping, at, I was looking at the Pro 4X and I just liked the, the fact that the STX was just a nice standard blank canvas um, with all the options. But, yeah, I don't know what's in there. but you oh, Just some just some camera gear in that. I just wanted to show you just how, just, they just look so nice and clean, leather interior, you know. It just um just looks like a, a like a, like yeah. a nice rig from inside. So all I've all I've done is just whack a couple of GoPro mounts on the dash, um, and that if the, if I got someone on the passenger side, I use this one. If it's just me in the car, I use this one, so it's angled towards me. But I'll just clip the GoPro in there. Yeah, if we're going doing episodes and stuff like that. And then head unit standard, just um, it's it's got standard. all Apple CarPlay and everything. Yeah, Apple GPS. CarPlay, all that sort of stuff. Voice recognition. Yeah. One one of the cool things I've I've seen. Is the is the camera? It's got the camera, the reversing camera. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you. And yeah. it's got cameras for the sides of the car. So it's got cameras on it on either side, so it sort of shows you diagrams around the car when you're reversing and stuff like that. Schmicko. I like it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's um, that's the sort of outside gear and inside gear of the actual car itself. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I think one of the biggest things we wanted to do when we come up here was, and when we started this channel, was just you know we, we research a lot of gear and we we try you know try a lot of different equipment out, a lot of different brands. Um, and when we arrive at one that we we kind of like or you know don't like, we sort of share that. Um, so, you know, it's obviously a lot of money for everyone when you're spending this sort of stuff. So, um, we wanted to do a section in this 
sort of rig run down on the Motop gear on top. So um, I think you're right, when you started before on the canopy, um, we'll just have a quick look through the canopy and then how we bolted the, the uh, roof topper on and everything. So what did you say, what, what brand did you say the canopy was? Uh, Renegade. So it's a pretty bu uh, budget canopy, um, you know, compared to a lot of the, the higher end markets like your Bush Company canopies and stuff like that. But it's basically the same thing. It's, 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 uh, it does the job. Uh, similar sort of uh, a setup. The, di the thing that I did like about this canopy, because uh, I was looking at the Bush Canopy, um, Bush Company canopies, was the, the contour at the back. The Bush, co uh, Bush Company canopies do contour out further at the back, and it's, I think they've designed it for the extra space and stuff like that, but I just didn't really like the aesthetic of it, which is, you know, just a personal thing. Um, but I kind of liked how this one just contoured a, a bit better to the shape of the car. So, um, for, so for, for those out. of you that have been watching for a while, the, um, the, the, the Bush Company fitted the canopy on my Hilux ute. Um, it was yeah. fantastic for my Hilux Oh, for they're, my they're a great ute. canopy. The brand yeah. was actually Al Alucab, Rhino, Al Alucab Rhino Canopy, I think it was. Um, but, and I think they did that contouring at the back just for water runoff and a few other things. But it's probably the only downside that I, for me, for that, for that canopy that I had was, um, was just the contour and sleek look which I think this one sort of sorts out for you yeah, and, and not, I've seen not... I've seen these canopies now that you've got one on I see them so much so when I was talking to um, the people who imported them I think they imported like 2,000 of them or something like that and they just go real quick so I think this was actually the last one they had for an Avara so I managed to um, to score this one before they they sold out but um, I'm not, not sure when they get another shipment in but yeah they are quite popular they're not not as tidy inside as you can see they're sort of held on by these mounts they're not not as tidy as your bush company one or anything like that but i'll be fitting this canopy out so those all will be hidden away anyway so it's no no drama to me really comes but with a little in, internal led light your your brake light and all that is all standard so but you haven't experienced any issues with it something move that doesn't you don't feel any movement in it you don't um dust in that inside you reckon or no no dust or rain or water or anything like that the only the only thing that i have noticed is um and i don't know if it's just the way that um they've mounted it on my truck but it does rub a little bit on the back on the back window of the of the actual cab see if i can get in here and just sort of show you what he means so now and then you'll just hear like a bit of a bump so i don't know if that could be fixed from just slightly pulling it back a little bit the way it's mounted. Um, it's, it doesn't really worry me, so I'm not gonna bother about it, but it might be something that you notice if you do grab this canopy, so. It's probably gonna draw back, maybe scuff down a little bit of paint, which might might come into a little bit of an issue later on with rust and all that sort of stuff if you're doing a heap of beach work, but. Yeah, I'll, yeah, it's not really worrying me at the moment, but. And the canopy, so, so the canopy supports the, uh, the roof topper and that well? Yep, um, I'll have to research, but from memory, I think it was 300 kilo uh, weight capacity on the canopy, on yep. the roof. Um, so we've got 75 kilos in the rooftop tent, probably another uh, 15, 20 kilos of awning and, and shower tent, maybe. And then um, 30 kilos chain ring and wet, sleeping in it in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're only an extra what 75, 80 kilos when I'm in it, so it's not yeah, not yep. going anywhere near the, the limit there. So yeah, okay, do we want to move on to the Motop gear. Yep. So I actually got this uh, this tent and awning set up secondhand from a guy uh, on Marketplace was um, was uh, changing rigs, so I snapped it up. Drove up the Sunshine Coast, snapped it up, um, but it's uh, the model is actually a Motop 120 plus. So I wanted to go with the 120 just because it matches the the width of the canopy and it doesn't overhang too much. But he'd already fitted it out with the bigger solar panel and everything, which is what I wanted. So it was sort of just a perfect um, perfect buy for me. I'll just see if I can get a little bit look at the contouring. As you mean by the sort of width of the canopy? Yeah, I wanted it to sort of just sit in within the contour of the canopy without overhanging too much. And if you go to the 135, I think it is, or the 140, 
obviously it's going to be overhanging a lot more and I don't need that kind of width anyway. I'm only, only a skinny bloke, so. And we just, uh, so we'll just cover off on the mount. So we actually had that, that sort of, a, it's just a base rack sitting under there, not a base rack brand, but it's just a roof rack sitting under there. It was actually on top of my Prado. Um, and I had to change because of all the mounts and fittings that I wanted to base rack with the, um, with the backbone mounts on my Prado. So we just literally took this roof rack off my car and just slid it straight onto Shane's and, um, and bolted it down so that he could, he could get the rack, he could get the roof topper on it. Yeah. So but, I think the, the tent, I think from memory it was 20, 2200 long. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah, and I think the... I think this is 1900. Yeah, not, I think so, yeah. Uh, roughly that. So <coughs> maybe try to get some dimensions, proper dimensions, and overlay them. Yeah, I'll put it all in the description anyway, but... Um, so, yeah. We actually... The, the nice the bloke that sold it to you, second hand, we actually stopped at the, on the side of the highway in a big car park and then lifted it Yeah, we had it to meet his, halfway. But <laughs> off it, his car and he then... He was nice enough to help us... Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a champion so effort. Shout yeah. out, Jake. Thanks yeah. so much, mate. And uh, we did it on the side of the road um, in a car park on the highway. So yeah. that's how easy they are to mount. Yeah. So should I open her up? Yeah, go for it, mate. So one thing I've noticed is you've got to kind of leave leave a couple of zips undone because of the vacuum. See how it's sort of vacuum suctioning. So if you open it up, she'll open up pretty easy. But that's all it is. You've got this little elastic strap here. This just helps the tent compress in when you're closing it up. So you just bring that down, hook that on the sides. And that's all it is. And basically the uh, stainless steel gas struts um, will, will hold it open. And uh, you just hook the ladder on and away you go. Easy as that. Ripper, and, you, and everything stays in it? You, you, your doona and all that sort of stuff will fit in there uh, when it's closed? Or? I've only got the mattress and I've got a mattress topper in there. Um, I don't leave anything in there, but I have had a lot of questions actually. Do I leave linen in there, sleeping bags, pillows? Um, and I promised I was going to try it, but I haven't tried it yet. So um, it's probably like a... 40 mil mattress topper so i would say you would you would be able to leave your sleeping bags and stuff in there maybe not pillows um but i'll definitely give that a try all right so this is the ladder it's just got a velcro strap on there undo the velcro strap and it just telescopes out so just line up the hooks hook it on Bob's your mother's brother. Easy as that. Yep, so just a couple of little tent poles. And they just pop into the holes in the aluminium there. A couple of little mounts on the side. And you roll your door you flap can, up. Uh, a couple of little tabs there. And you hook, the, hook them over. Hook them in. So it looks like it's pretty cool. Is it's got it, obviously you can have when it's raining you can have the doors open and then it's got the vents on the side to let a bit of air flow through, which is which is pretty cool, I reckon. Then you got your mosquito mosquito screen there. All right, so that's fully set up, is it? That's it. That's it. All right, that's all I'll it just, is. Uh, I'll just climb up the back and give you a look inside. So, just firstly, have a look at the view. 
that you get from the back. Oh, yeah. Or from the side. Check this out. Waking up to this every morning would be nice, wouldn't it? Look at that view. That's why we call it the Navitel. So, so from the inside, crack on. So on the inside you've got felt lined on the underside of the roof here. You've got this little panel which has got pockets. Storage pockets. And then it comes with this little boot bag. Well, I guess you could use it for, for anything you want. It's got little clips on it. Um, there's also an LED light on the inside here. And that's, that's gonna be wired up when I get my 12 volt system. There's also one underneath the tent down there. Got a couple of pockets either side. For your phone and your keys and everything. Um, yeah, Bob's your uncle. And all that on top, that, that's carpeted. You can put Velcro all on that, You eh? can, yeah. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people do different things, different ideas with Velcro, stuff like that. Um, and then and then you see here, if we can lift up this. <coughs> yeah, so, so I'll show you this. So this is the mattress topper that I've just got in there extra, but this is the actual standard um, self-inflating mattress that you get with it. Yeah, felt underneath there. And that thickness is probably, what, 75? I think, I'm pretty sure it's a 75 mil. Yep. Yeah, and then you and then you roll out your mattress topper, right? Eh? Yeah, this is just for a little bit of extra comfort, but um, I have it's I have memory foam. I though. have used it with just the mattress, and it's quite comfortable for me. Somebody who's a little bit heavier might need the extra mattress topper. Mattress topper, but uh, it's fine for me. Yeah, the mattress does does a great job. Cool. So, is it, is there any power to the tent itself? There's. There's the cord that goes up to the LED light on the roof there. Yeah. Um, and I was reading up on, I think it's the version 5, which is the, the next, uh, the newer model than this one. I, I think they do now come with a little 12 volt um, connections where you can plug USB stuff and things like that in. Um, but no, this one doesn't have anything like that. But I will be fitting it out with cool that kind of thing. All right. Charge my phone and laptop and all that rubbish. I'll, um, I'll swing around the front while you've got it up and I'll get up and show the solar panel and stuff and then um, we yep. might have a look at the, uh, the, the, the uh, 270 awning and the uh, shower tent, eh? Sounds good. Fairly decent sized solar panel. You can see you've got some room up the back there for another one if you're, if you're that way inclined power wise. I must admit, while Shane's finger in the road, while Shane's um, getting down and starting to set up his 270, uh, I am je I do get jealous. Um, I, like I love swag life, um, but like being up that high, having the view, having the cool breeze in the summer when you're beach camping and stuff like that, um, and just seeing him roll out of it, you know, in the morning with a good night's sleep on, um, on in some really comfy gear, um, I do get a little bit jealous. But I, I don't think I could do, uh, I like being able to drive my car. So I like being able to set up the campsite and then take my car on little day trips when we're camping for long periods of time or go to, you know, on, the, on the mainlands or in the townships and get supplies and stuff like that um, and just drive down for a fish down the, down the beach and stuff like that. So, um, to, you know, it works well when we're both away because, uh, you know, he sets his car up and then we use my car to do everything else. But um, I don't know, maybe a camper trailer uh, with a roof topper and all that sort of stuff. Uh, later on down the track for me, but um, it, yeah, he, he seems to uh, he seems to like the uh, tent life on top of the car, which is good. Anyway, he's up there getting some getting some mint reels, bro. <laughs> Come on, bud. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody talking, just filling time till you get down. And you're, you're up there. It's all productive. Filming fucking shorts. <laughs> Where's me drink though? Your sewage water. <sighs> All right. Hey, these um these mics are pretty cool, man. How, How cool is it that I can walk around the car and you can be in the rooftop and just be talking? How about it, man? 
All right, so next on the list. So next on the list is a Motop 270 awning. So it um, gives a little bit of an explanation about where this came from. The Motop 270 awning was actually attached to the tent. Um, as I said, bought the tent off a guy called Jacob Marketplace and he actually had this set up on his Hilux. So this was actually already bolted onto the tent. Um, but yeah, same company, Motop make these things. 270, 270 degree awning. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll rip it out and show you. It's as easy as this. We can get it first. Get first go. <laughs> we'll see. It's just a Velcro strap in the middle. Unhook that. Fold the cover up. On the loop on the end, all I do is I've got an elastic jockey strap here. Hook one end on. And that goes all the way around. I'll just get this out of the way. That goes all the way around. And then I'll just hook it up onto the front of my rack here. Easy as that. And we got this little, we got this little mount in the middle, which just pops it up in the middle there and that'll Help with all your water runoff and stuff like that, keep it nice and tight. And uh, yeah, that's it. Literally that was... as easy as that. Put a time, hey, put a timer on that when you put it out, to, just to show you how quickly. Ten seconds, twelve yeah. seconds, easy. Covers the back of my canopy. Yeah, she's a beauty. You can pull it a little bit tighter than that. He's just got the bungee. Yeah, if it's high wind and stuff like that, you can you can actually use a a um, ratchet strap to. Keep it tighter, but and there is, I've never had an issue with it. There's little tie down points on the corners just in case you are in some serious wind. Yeah, it comes with um, tent poles and things like that that you can tie down and yeah, off the side here to keep it nice and steady. But as I said, I've, I've never had a drama with it yet. This is the uh, poles here. So if you do get in some strife with some, some wind, a windy campsite, you've got these and they just basically hook into there and then you can tie them down with normal ropes and tent pegs. So that's the 270 awning. As I said, I'll put all the details and the sizes, dimensions in the description as well as uh, the website, MW Toolbox, I think the website, but I'll put that all in the description. On this side, I've just got their, again, Motop. Um, I bought this one about two weeks ago, just so that um, my kids and everything, we can just get changed on the beach when we're doing day trips, and we can also use it as a, as a shower tent when, when we're camping, stuff like that. Just unzips, got a couple of Velcro straps here, unfolds. So it's got two arms here with little quick release latches. The first one you pull out, undo the latch, bring it out further so that you can get the left one out. Pull the left one out and it'll latch in place like that. Make sure this one's latched in. That's it. Nice little shower tent. And we just got a zip here which goes into your shower tent. Got a couple of little pockets in here. Your storage, your soap, shampoo, things like that. Yeah, it's just a, a nice simple little setup. This is, this is the roof for it if you want to put the roof on. Pop it over the top here. And it's basically just Velcros on the side here, like that. Washing me pits and bits. <clears throat>
And you can peg it down to the ground, I assume, eh? Yep, it's got these little... It's got, it's got these little straps on the bottom so that you can peg them down if, if it's windy. That's it, this, so this is the new rig. That's the full setup. So what's uh well firstly mint set up mate. It's uh as I said we go away and I'm a little, a little bit jealous about when, when the Navitel fans out into its well, yeah. into its full kit. It's been a long time coming but um yeah with the, the Navarro D forty I used to have I used to I used to have the um the old style fold out rooftop tent, which uh, you know, they weigh a ton. It's always it was always hard to crawl up on there and, and unfold it. And it, I always ended up doing my back in. So this thing's just, it's just awesome having this. This thing is so easy just to unhook. And it does look effortless, I, I will admit. The, um, mm. the old, his old setup, I, I, I used to kick my swag out in about 90 seconds and then sit down and just watch him <laughs> struggle yeah. with the flip out one. But this one is just, he almost beat, he beats me with my swag now. Well, that, that's the thing. I went back to a swag after, after I, I got rid of that D40 because um, I was sick of having a set up camp and then not being able to go for a drive with Tim and that because I already have my camp set up. So I went back to a swag, so I didn't have to do that. But with this setup, I, I can basically sit around the campfire, have a few beers, and I don't even have to really unhook it until I want to go to bed if I don't want to. So I can still go for drives in the afternoon. It's just effortless. So well, you, you can even set it up, and then if you need to position the car for campsite feng shui, you can just reposition just the car. It. Yeah, it's just easy. <laughs> it's, so good. Yes, yeah, I'm definitely really happy with this setup. So the next thing on the list will be snorkel. Yeah, I, was just, I was just about to say, what's 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 next, mate? What, yeah. what, what's next? Yeah. So as I said, I'm really happy with this setup. So um, it next thing will just be fitting a snorkel, um, going back to Pro Check, um, getting a tune and exhaust, and just getting a little bit more horsepower under it because I've got the big big tyres and wheels on it now. Um, it just needs that little bit extra. Um, so I'll get that done. 12 volt system, hook all that up to my lights and solar that I've got on the tent, and I think uh, probably another fridge, and then that'll be me. So, so the rear setup here, just a temporary deal? Yeah, this is a temporary setup. Um, I've got a good mate, um, Tim, who runs Four Point Touring, who does amazing um, canopy fit outs. Shout out, Tim. Yeah, so when I get it, when I finally get the chance, um, I'm gonna roll this to him and and let him do his magic. But that might not be for a little while yet. So this is just a temp setup. It's got a couple of drawers in there. Um, yeah, so it'll be a new fridge and then and I then think book, book it in with Tim for a full fit out. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, hoping to. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, it's it's come together really well. It has it's starting to. Uh, the other only thing will be. Uh, uh, shower system, hot water showers and stuff like that. Um, and then that way, with the 12 volt system, I'll be able to charge all our drone batteries, GoPro batteries, you know, run the lap laptop if we're doing some editing on the run. Um, maybe yeah, air compressor, stuff like that. So. Awesome, man. That'll do the job for the uh, Explore Mode episodes for the next probably 12 to 18 months, I think. That'll be it. Excellent. I hope you like the rig rundown. Um, as I said, some people have been asking for a little while. Um, once I get a, f a few more uh, Ks on the Prado and do a few more trips, um, get some more fit gear fitted out on it, we'll, uh, we'll give you a rundown on the, um, on the Prado as well. Uh, but for now, go on MIA, uh, the Explore Mode rig, the, uh, the um, what, do you, what do you call them? The mascot. <laughs> Explore Mode. Mascot. Anyway, go on MIA, the mascot for Explore Mode is um, Wicked Rig. If you've got any questions or, um, or if you want any more details on the rig, just, uh, just hit the comments and make sure you like and subscribe. And, and, uh, and if you want, any, and check if out you want any sand, I've got plenty of it here for you. Yep, he's got some sand there for you. There you go. Just in case you can't get to the beach, I'm going to throw it in a bucket and ship it out to you. Plenty here for you if you want some. Anyway, Mint, well done. Check his next time, guys. Yeah.